All right, everybody, let's go ahead and get today's program started. It's 12 o'clock. That means it's time for the Lunchtime Discovery Series. Hi, folks. Good afternoon. Great to be with you again for another edition of our program. My name is Chris Smith. I work at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences, and I'm your host most Wednesdays for the Lunchtime Discovery Series. Broadcast out of the museum, but of course, the program is a service coordinated and organized by the North Carolina Office of Environmental Education within the Department of Environmental Quality, working together to bring you fantastic, cool, interesting people who are doing great work out there in the worlds of science, nature, conservation, education, and beyond. Uh, and, well, this series is always great, but April is a special time for those of us working in the environment and education because... Well, April has Earth Day in it on April 22nd, coming up very soon. We're only a few days away. And so we've been hearing stories all month long of people who are investing in our planet and investing in our future in lots of great ways. And we're going to do that again today for the Lunchtime Discovery Series. So let me go ahead and bring on today's guest speakers. First up, I want you to meet the farm educator for Durham Public Schools Hub Farm, Hannah Ball Danberg. Hi, Hannah. Hey, y'all. Nice to be here with you. Thanks for joining us. And then also today, we're going to be hearing from the head of culinary arts at Northern High School in the Durham system. Welcome, Chef Peter Brodsky. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having us. Thanks for being here, Chef. I'm excited to have you both here today to uh, learn a little bit more. I hope everybody watching has their snacks ready for this one because I have a feeling we're going to get hungry during this presentation if they're not already, Hannah, take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Let me share my screen here. All right. Um, awesome. Well, thanks for having us again. Um, my name is Hannah Ball Danberg. Like Chris said, um, I am a farm educator at the Durham Public Schools Hub Farm, and we will get into it soon. Um, but we are going to be presenting today on how Chef Peter Brodsky and I um, work together to create integrated outdoor and vocational programming for high school students in Durham Public Schools. So I'll introduce myself a bit more. Um, again, my name's Hannah Ball Danberg. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I have been at the DPS Hub Farm for six years now. I actually am from Durham um, and was a Durham Public School student myself. So it's really great to get to um, come back to the school system and work in it with students who were once me. Um, and at the Hub Farm, I manage um, the landscape, the landscaping and gardens. Um, we have livestock that we manage. I help coordinate and manage and facilitate volunteers, field trips, high school internships, and a bunch more. Brodsky, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Peter Brodsky. Um, I use he, his pronouns, and I'm one of the three culinary arts instructors up here at Northern High School. Um, this is my my ninth year at Northern, um, and I am, uh, as they say, a restaurant refugee, so a chef that kind of left the industry and is able to bring all those kind of years of restaurant experience um, into a different setting and kind of get the next generation of young chefs ready. Um, and my job here is to kind of coordinate the programming, the catering, the instruction for, for all the students in the culinary arts program. Yep. Thank you, Chef. And um, you can see that this photo of Chef Brodsky's from a few years ago with his culinary arts students at the Hub Farm harvesting garlic. Um, and then on the left, that's me with some of our um, summer interns from a few summers ago. All right. So a quick overview of our presentation today. So we're going to do um, a bit of an introduction to the Hub Farm. Then Chef Brodsky is going to introduce the culinary arts program um, and what they focus on. Then we'll get a bit into our programmatic collaborations um, and our vision for the future. And at the end of the presentation, we'll leave time for questions and answers. Um, and the photo below is our vegetable garden at the Hub Farm. So you can get a kind of an image of what we look like. All right, so a bit more about the Hub Farm. Um, the Hub Farm was founded in 2012. Um, we are the district's outdoor learning center on 30 acres of Shikori and Okanichi indigenous land in North Durham. We are located between the an elementary school, a middle school, and the former Northern High School. Northern has just moved down the street 
a few minutes away, um, but we are really well situated in North Durham between um, three different schools. We are managed by two farm educators, so myself and my colleague Jeff Seelan, um, and one program manager, my colleague Ashley Meredith. The three of us are funded through the Career and Technical Education Department of Durham Public Schools. Um, and so a lot of the work we do focuses on, again, vocational training for our high school students. Um, and finally, we have one AmeriCorps member, this year's service member, her name is Ray Cohn. And again, at the Hub Farm, we have, um, we have 30 acres of property. So we have a wide variety of outdoor learning resources on our property. Those include pollinator and vegetable gardens, um, an orchard, a pond with a floating classroom on it, um, many miles of forest trails, um, outdoor classrooms. And then for our livestock right now, we keep chickens, honeybees, and rabbits. Um, and then there's, of course, a whole lot more on the property. So I'm going to show this um, short video uh, that will give a bit more background about the Hub Farm. educational facility owned by Durham Public Schools. We've got about 30 acres here and we host field trips for kids to learn all about sustainable agriculture and environmental education and um, how they connect their lives to the outdoors. We have some forest trails, a garden, chickens, we've got ducks, We've got an apiary, so we have three honey beehives right now. The background idea was like the hub of a wheel and the spokes go out to schools and the different parts of the community. It is one of the only educational farms that's owned and operated by a public school system in this region. This year's our 10 year anniversary. Over the last decade, we've seen 20,000 students. So it's 10 years of engaging our Durham Public Schools community in meaningful outdoor experiences. It's a special place because lots of people care about it. And lots of kids get to discover new things here. Awesome. All right, so that is the Hub Farm. I will go a bit more into our mission um, in a little bit, but let's get over to Chef Brodsky now to talk a bit more about the Culinary Arts Program at Northern. All right, thank you, Hannah. Um, so yeah, uh, up in Northern High School, we have this uh, really amazing Culinary Arts Program, um, which again, under the same umbrella of career and technical education for Durham Public Schools, um, provides vocational training, um, and that's available to all students in Durham Public Schools through what's called the Magnet Pathway Program. Um, any student that wants to take uh, culinary arts can apply through the Magnet Program and attend either uh, Northern High School or Jordan. We both have culinary offerings for that uh, programming. Um, and our goal is to um, really aid students in um, getting a jump start on their professional development, build the careers that will make them successful in the hospitality industry um, and beyond, because there are um, lots of things that the skill set for food service and for restaurants translates really well to elsewhere. Um, an amazing chef by the name of uh, Andy Summers, my predecessor, kind of uh, reimagined, relaunched the program at Northern back in 2007. Um, he had a starting class of 17 students, and now we're well over 300 a year. Uh, so we've really grown quite a bit, and we've got some some pictures there of uh, students making our our pepper jelly that we do every year to uh, preserve the peppers that we grow over at the Hub Farm. Um, and obviously, we get out into the community, we get to do a lot of really neat demos and stuff. So in the bottom right, you see a student there teaching an elementary school kid who will end up here someday how to make pasta. Uh, we get to do a lot of really fun stuff. And we'll just oh. show a short a short clip on um, the culinary program.
CTE courses like culinary arts helps you bridge the connection between the classroom and what lies beyond. Size of this half inch cube. A little higher up on the plate. Right above. Now all I need to do is cut up to be the same way. Remember, this is the afternoon, very good. All right. Let Durham Public Schools CTE program help get you future ready. Awesome. Well, I'm not going to play that again. <laughs> cool. Um, all right. So a little bit more about the hub farm. We're kind of going to bounce back and forth between um, talking about the hub farm, talking about culinary arts before we get into our collaborative work. Um, but the hub farm's mission is to engage the Durham public school community in meaningful outdoor experiences. And we have sort of three prongs of our mission. So we um, focus on environmental education, community engagement, and capacity building for outdoor learning at the broader district level. Um, and this is a really cool aerial shot. I love this shot of the hub farm that where you can sort of see our pond with our floating classroom on it, um, our barn, which was the only structure on the farm when the farm was first founded. It was built by career technical education students in the 80s and 90s. And then um, over on the left is our former vegetable garden, which is now our perennial orchard. So a little bit about our environmental education facet of our mission. So um, as part of environmental education, we offer students a broad variety of experiences at the farm. We offer K through 12 field trips and we offer those both as standards aligned field trips. So teachers um, can request a uh, field trip that focuses on a specific learning standard in their classroom. So we often work with science teachers, obviously, but we do work with English, English and language arts teachers, math teachers, et cetera. We also offer experiential field trips. So when Chef Brodsky um, brings his culinary students out, um, we, we used to have a, a weekly visit with his culinary students. Um, those field trips would be really more experiential, hands-on focused. So rather than being standards aligned, we would harvest whatever was um, ready to be harvested in the garden or prepare a bunch of beds for planting, et cetera. We also offer both high school and college internships. Um, we partner closely with UNC Chapel Hill. Um, we've partnered with NC State before. We also offer, we offer after school high school internships and also a summer high school internship. Those usually focus um, on agriculture, horticulture, uh, animal science, and culinary arts. And then finally, we do offer a summer camp for rising first and third through third graders. Um, and at summer camp, we hire DPS teachers to serve as counselors, and then DPS high school students who serve as counselors in training. So we have sort of this built in capacity building professional embedded professional development for outdoor learning for both our students and our teachers. Um, and here, the, the center photo is a photo from summer camp a few years ago. We also have a photo on the right of a, um, a cooking lesson during a field trip. And then on the left, we have a student kind of getting closer into investigating some basil in our garden. The second part of our mission is community engagement. So we offer weekly volunteer opportunities at the farm, some corporate volunteer work days. We have spring and fall farm festivals like Brodsky men mentioned earlier, um, where he and his students actually uh, make all of the food for those festivals. They're like huge open houses. We offer community events and workshops. Um, we recently offered a restorative practices workshop for teachers. Um, we also are, you know, we're offering a virtual cookie night coming up soon, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And then we also offer free plant giveaways every spring, um, summer, and fall. We grow 1,500 small plant starts, vegetable starts for giveaway to our DPS teachers and our broader community. Um, and these are two photos from two different uh, big events at the Hub Farm. And finally, uh, the third 
point of our mission is capacity building for outdoor learning at the district level. So we recognize that we are just four people that run this program and we have an entire district that we want to reach. Um, unfortunately, we can't reach all of our students and teachers. So to spread outdoor learning to the district level, we offer professional development opportunities for DPS educators. Um, and like I said, we offer embedded professional development for our summer camp counselors. Um, we focus on expanding outdoor learning access for all students across the district um, through opportunities like our internship programs um, and also getting those plant starts into all of our schools and school gardens. And then we also offer a professional learning community in collaboration with our district's outdoor learning specialist, Erin Carroll. Um, awesome. All right, and so a uh, little bit more to tell you about the Northern High School Culinary Arts Program and what we offer. Um, like I said, I'm one of three uh, chefs that teach here. So we have uh, three kind of industry professionals who all went to, you know, the the, the top tier culinary schools. Um, and we have this five semester program split up between the three of us. Um, so students can take uh, all four semesters of culinary arts that are um, created and offered by the state of North Carolina. And then we have a fifth semester called Advanced Studies, where students are able to do um, kind of student-driven, student-focused, research-based um, senior year projects. Um, so the four students you see here, actually, they are in the Advanced Studies program now, um, and their big focus point has been uh, competition. So they're competing uh, in just under a month in Tennessee for the regional championship for junior chef. Um, they actually, they're, they were tasked as this competition to create um, a school lunch meal. So a meal that met all of the criteria for national school lunch standards, um, including the cost, which is very, very difficult to achieve. Um, and they, they were able to win the state of North Carolina competition. Now they get to go to regionals. Um, and actually right outside the door, I have a few of them working on production. They're going to produce this recipe for all of the schools in Durham Public Schools um, in about two weeks. So they're working on scaling that up right now. Um, we really do focus on real world experiences like that. We do um, an awful lot of catering, uh, event management, um, sourcing ingredients, which is one of the places where we're able to partner really, really well with the hub farm. Say, hey, you know, as we're writing these menus, think about what's in season, what we planted at the hub farm, what is ready to harvest based on, you know, the the harvest calendar that Hannah provides us um, so that we are making things that are seasonally appropriate, really teaches students to understand what they have available to them at what times a year. Um, and it's just a, a great thing that we're able to offer. Um, and yeah, beyond that, you know, students really can do their own purchasing, their own costing, their own recipe writing, their own menu creation. Um, they take a lot of ownership over the events that we do and over the cooking that happens in the class. Um, we do like to partner with a lot of local employers, to try to get students placed before they graduate in food service positions where they have room to grow and develop and continue to build on the skills they've picked up in the classroom and, you know, hopefully find places for them where they can, um, you know, launch into their careers. Um, a bit on some of the collaborations that we do. Um, so something that really the, our, our starting point worked on these um, farm to table meals and catering. So through all, through all of our catering, which we have quite a bit of, we we'll try to incorporate produce from the hub farm when it's available, as it's available. And then oopsies, at least once a year, um, try to do a farm to table meal um, so those same students actually have been working on writing out a menu for a five course dinner that we'll be offering at the hub farm in May to some special guests. Um, we've done that before we feed the Board of Education. Um, and it's really special to be able to make a meal where the students have seen every ingredient in that meal from seed to sprout, to weed, to water, to harvest, to wash, to prep, to cook. Um, that is something that is is really, really unheard of. It's not something I got to experience in culinary school. I think it's really special. Um, as Hannah said, we do a, a lot of the events at the Hub Farm. If there's um, an open house or the Spring Festival, we're going to be there um, with food, um, getting students to taste and smell and see some of these products that they have maybe not been familiar with. 
um, is hugely important to me as part of the video Hannah showed, there were some culinary students um, picking okra that we actually brought back to the school and we made gumbo and we pickled. Um, and that might be an ingredient that if they've ever seen it, they wouldn't have known what it was. So having them be able to see how it is when it grows, how it is when it's overgrown or undergrown and, and different things that they can do with it is, is really special. Um, obviously, as part of the programming, we want to teach about sustainability, um, sustainable agriculture, um, sustainable food service, which much food, uh, quite a bit of food service in this country is not built on sustainable models. Um, so having an opportunity right down the street to show them uh, the difference between organic produce and what they might find from a full line purveyor is is really important. Um, and, you know, teaching them to respect and appreciate the environment that we have and the spaces that we have um, and that environmental stewardship pieces is, is awesome. Um, so a little bit more on something that we were talking about is our we're really proud of. We did some great programming response uh, to COVID-19. Um, obviously at that time, we were no longer able to bring students down to the hub farm. We had students at home, we were at home. We had a Hannah at the farm uh, and her colleagues had a garden just overflowing with all of these products. Um, so we came up with this idea where uh, Hannah and the team at the farm would harvest as much as they could in a given week. Um, we would build a recipe and a lesson plan around what was harvested. Um, and in a kind of a CSA model, I would come to the farm, pick up all of these bags of produce and drop them off at the homes of all of these students. And then on Zoom, we would get together and we would make something with whatever we had. Um, so, you know, we did a, a lot of preserving because that fits really well into the curriculum, learning about food preservation. Um, and about seasonality and all of those things. So in the picture on the screen, you can see uh, making a whole bunch of different kinds of pickles with all of these students at home. Um, and that, we we really enjoyed that. It was, it was a ton of fun. There were times I wish we could keep doing that. So, so we still do. We offer these district-wide virtual cooking nights. Uh, and it started during COVID. We'd say, you know, this is fun. Let's do this for everybody. Um, so now we offer these twice a year, one in the fall and one in the spring, one sweet and one savory, where we take a product that's in season at the hub farm and we build a recipe around it. Uh, and then we teach a class for it. Uh, so the next one will actually be a week from today and we'll have a slide for it in just a few minutes. Um, we'll be making, I think, carrot cake cupcakes next week. Um, and we'll get, you know, students from all over the district and beyond who sign up to come for that. Um, and now, you know, just like we had during COVID, new challenges to figure out as we've uh, relocated. Northern High School has just moved um, about a mile and a half down the road to our new facility, uh, and it's and it's changed the the dynamic. So we have to figure out different ways to get these students engaged at the hub farm and with the farm because we can't just take them out the back door and and walk over there anymore. Now we have to um, be a little bit more strategic and a little bit longer uh, longer term planning in terms of how we get our products from the farm, how we get students there with their hands in the dirt, you know, kind of seeing and smelling and feeling these things. Yeah, and I'll just add something real quick. One of my favorite pieces about getting to um, kind of pivot to this virtual offering was that Brodsky and I really got to um, share some creativity there. So we got to do a lot of uh, recipe planning just based on whatever I was able to harvest the, you know, that, that specific week in the garden. Um, so it really, it, that, that pro programmatic response really allowed us um, an outlet for creativity and student engagement um, and also was a great way to use all of the produce in our garden that had no, no home. So really enjoyed that. Uh, so like I was saying, our spring virtual cooking night is coming up very soon. Uh, it's one week from today. And anyone out there, if you want to register, our door is always open. Uh, so there's a link right there on the screen. Uh, and like I said, we'll be doing carrot cake cupcakes. Really, really simple to put together. We have a lot, a lot of our elementary school families join for this. Um, so these are always things where we've got 
young participants. Um, we always try to think about recipes that we can have some some help from our youngers. So there will definitely be a, a three year old in my house, you know, shredding carrots and uh, whacking up butter. Yeah, so feel free to go to that link, tinyurl.com slash spring24 cooking night um, to register. And then we will send out an email next Monday with our Zoom information. Um, and we will also have Spanish interpretation on the call. So we have um, an option for uh, ideally as many families as possible. So please, please join us and make some seasonal carrot cake cupcakes with us. All right, so um, this is a screenshot actually of our, what we call our crop rotation at the Hub Farm. Um, and so as a sustainable farm, we practice crop rotation, which means that we move different families of plants between different beds um, from season to season. And that allows nutrients in the soil to replenish. That also allows um, or attempts to break up the cycle of pests. Um, so it, it helps with pest pressure as well. So this is a this is the kind of the spreadsheet that that Chef Brodsky was referring to earlier that our harvest calendar that we would provide um, his class. And so every season when we have his students coming to the farm or now as we are building menus kind of from a distance, um, this is a really useful uh, key for his students. And so Often we will have students um, give feedback on what is being grown at the farm, or if we have a specific dinner that we are planning, we can integrate some of those ingredients, some of those vegetables into our crop rotation so that um, we are growing specifically for Brodsky students or his catering program or whatever events we might be putting on. Um, and like Brodsky mentioned, we um, have collaborated before on a board of education dinner a few years ago where um, his students at the beginning of the semester decided which plants they wanted us hub farmers to grow. Um, they helped us seed those plants and grow those plants and then plant them out in our garden. They helped prep the beds for those plants, lay the irrigation, um, and then they would come on a weekly basis to maintain the plants. So weeding and pest management um, and finally harvesting. So we dug up a bunch of rows of baby potatoes and had those as roasted potatoes. We also served the Board of Education um, some ducks that we raised at the Hub Farm. And that was a really cool experience to get to see um, where our meat comes from. Um, so anyways, this is sort of a an overview of how Brodsky students and the Hub Farm get to actually plan our garden in real time. Um, and this year we are, as Brodsky mentioned, in May in about a month we are putting on our first ever on-farm, farm-to-table dinner. We will be inviting um, all of our high school interns and their families. We'll be inviting some um, important stakeholders throughout the district. And we're really uh, hoping to celebrate all of these intersections of programming at the Hub Farm. So we'll have Brodsky's culinary arts students will be um, cooking and serving the, the dishes and their families will be there too, I hope, fingers crossed. Um, and then we will have some of our um, interns who are part of a youth food policy council in the district who are helping reshape the lunch system in DPS. We'll have them there presenting their um, semester projects. And so we're really excited about this sort of cross collaboration um, and getting to also highlight seasonal produce at the farm. Um, yeah. Here's some fun photos I thought I'd share um, so you guys get sort of more of a taste of what uh, students coming to the Hub Farm looks like. So in our upper left-hand corner is an image of one of our CSA bags. So that's a community supported agriculture bag. Um, that was sort of what a bag looked like when we started our, um, our weekly cooking nights in 2020. So that looks like a spring bag. We also have a jar of pepper jelly there. Um, Brodsky mentioned he and his students take all of our spicy peppers from the farm and process them and make this delicious pepper jelly. We're actually going to be featuring that pepper jelly at this farm dinner coming up in a um, in a puff ball or something, a, a, some sort of little appetizer with cheese, with some local cheese. Um, and then this middle image is actually a shot of that pepper jelly getting produced. 
Um, and then over on the right, we have two of Brodsky students harvesting, um, it looks like melons um, from the summer and melons and peppers and eggplant. Um, in the bottom right hand corner is another image of a CSA bag. We've got um, some eggs there as well. We used to have ducks, as I mentioned, we now just have chickens. Um, all of the produce from the farm, if it's not donated to Brodsky's culinary arts program, it is then donated to um, students and families that come to the farm. And again, we offer cooking lessons during field trips. Um, and we're always just trying to, we always send people home with bags and bags of fresh produce and eggs. Um, in the center here, we have a kale salad that was um, part of our Board of Education dinner that was plated by and, and prepared by Brodsky students. Um, in kind of the center left, we have an image of some of our high school interns this past fall helped uh, process and nixtamalize our um, dent corn that we grew at the hub farm. We grew a, a Oaxacan green heirloom corn at the farm that is grown specifically to make masa. Um, which is used to make tortilla dough. And so our students actually got the chance to um, do that process from start to finish, plant the seeds, harvest the corn, dry the corn, and then nixtamalize it, which is the process of bathing the corn in um, wood ash or in lye. And it helps um, stabilize the corn. And then we dehydrate it, we grind it and dehydrate it, and then make this um, make these fresh tortillas. So these are some of our students um, preparing those balls of tortilla dough and then pressing them to make tortillas. And we had a big with a bunch of families. That was really wonderful. And then on the bottom left-hand corner, we have his students processing a bunch of local apples for our fall festival this past fall. They processed all of those apples and made a fresh apple cider um, that we serve to all of our visitors at the farm. Um, and finally, on the bottom, that very small photo is a bunch of his students during COVID. Obviously, you can see the masking um, harvesting produce to take back up to the culinary kitchens. So our vision for the future, um, certainly we want to continue collaborating. It's one of my favorite parts about working at the Hub Farm is getting to work with Chef Brodsky and his students, really gives meaning and context for my work as a, as a farmer and a, an educator. Um, we also want to continue to expand within both of our programs. So, um, you know, we're thinking about creative ways to continue growing our programs that are also sustainable for um, small staff sizes. <laughs> um, we also hope to serve as a model for other career technical education um, programs throughout the North Carolina public school system. So for other similar culinary arts programs or agriculture programs, we um, have started partnering with some Wake County programs as well. So we are excited about learning from other programs and also continuing to build our own. Um, and then finally, one of our biggest um, focuses right now and, and also challenges is how to create distance programming um, as Northern High School has moved down the road that will continue to provide meaningful collaboration between the farm and the culinary arts program. And so like, as I've mentioned, um, one of those distance programming um, kind of uh, pivots is that we are menu planning for our spring farm dinner with our advanced studies students. So we um, we went to the culinary arts kitchen a month or two ago and um, brainstormed uh, everything that would be in season in May and then talked through, okay, what does that look like for an appetizer? What does that look like for uh, a soup and a salad? What does that look like for an entree that has a protein and also a vegetarian option? And then what does that look like for our dessert? Um, so we've landed on our menu is um, we are going to be making a kale salad with a quick pickled radishes. Um, and then we're going to serve a pea and mint soup. Again, seasonally appropriate. Um, we are going to be making a homemade carrot tagliatelle pasta with a, um, a meat option from a local farm in Hillsborough and a vegetarian option as well. And then finally, we are going to finish off the night with a, um, a strawberry creme brulee using um, strawberry preserves that we'll make out of our farm's strawberries. And then also the, the creme brulee piece, the custard we made with Hub Farm chicken eggs. Um, so we're really excited about that. We'll also be using, we'll be supplementing with produce from local farms. Anything that we can't supply from the hub farm will be outsourcing to local um, vendors. So 
yeah, we're really excited about getting to uh, do that project together, even though Northern has moved down the road. And that pretty much concludes our talk. So thank you so much for having us um, during this lunch hour. It looks like we have a little bit of time left for questions, but we just wanted to add our emails here. Um, if you have any questions or would like to collaborate as well, you can email me at Hannah underscore Ball Danberg at dpsnc.net, Peter underscore Brodsky at dpsnc.net, and there are our respective um, websites. So thank you again so much. And Chris, um, I will pass it back to you now to facilitate any questions we might have. Oh, fantastic. I love that picture. Hannah Chef Brodsky, thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. This is incredible stuff. I, I mean, like the farm looks beautiful. The food sounds amazing. Plus it's just inspiring to see uh, people passionate about this and energizing, you know, younger people than us to to think about food and sustainability and the planet and feeding people. Like all of that stuff wrapped up together is just just incredible work. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Thank we're you. we're lucky to get to do it. So uh I'll remind our viewers, if you've got questions, thoughts, comments. Jump onto the chat there on YouTube, type them in, or you can post on social media. Use the hashtag lunchtime discovery. That way we can see them and get them into the program. The questions can find their way to me, and then I can ask our very special guests. But uh, for y'all, a couple that have come in already. Susie wanted to know how all this got started because they see a lot of value in lots more school districts being able to do something similar. Anna, yeah. do you want to take that? Sure. Yeah. Happy to. Um, so the hub farm was started, like I said, in 2012. Um, and we started because a group of parents and teachers and community members um, got together because there was this 30, 30 acre property in North Durham that was lying in disuse. And so the CTE program had used it for some years prior to 2012. Um, like I said, the barn that's on our property was the only structure there, and it was built by um, electrical and engineering students who used it to raise goats um, and also to fish. Uh, agriculture students used the pond to fish. But other than that, the land was laying um, sort of fallow and, and fell into disuse for many, many years. And so that group of teachers, educators, um, community members got together to dream up what the space could be and how it could sort of be revitalized as a outdoor learning center. Um, and so that is that is the sort of the, the birth of the Hub Farm. Um, and we are really lucky to uh, have funding through our career and technical education department. Um, and I will say that, you know, it definitely takes a district that supports the creative um, creative reuse of land. And I think that a lot of districts in North Carolina specifically have tons and tons, um, tens of, of hundreds of acres of land as part of their district. And so there are a lot of really creative opportunities there to use some of that land that is just, that is being unused because it is certainly an extremely valuable resource. And then for my part, the, the culinary tie into that, um, when I first came to Northern High School and found out that the Hub Farm was so close and that they were growing all of these fruits and vegetables and that we were not using them um, in our production that we were already doing, I about lost my mind because, you know, funding for high school culinary programs is already very, very slim. So being able to grow any of your own products is, um, you know, beyond having incredible educational value, uh, a huge money saver. Um, so in my first year, I started bringing students down there um, and we would harvest, you know, everything that we could. Uh, and it took, you know, a Hannah's arrival and um, a few more years of visits for us to really start to structure and build um, and, and plan ahead and make things um, much more um, educationally valuable for the students where it wasn't just, hey, let's go for a walk and pick some berries. It's you know, hey, let's let's really learn about, um, you know, why these berries grow here and when. Yeah, that seems very special, very and real, very important to the process uh, that even I don't know, 
maybe chef you could talk about uh like you mentioned your experience coming up to culinary school and there not being a hub farm that was a part of that experience and so what's the difference like between like i don't want i don't know if you had like a traditional culinary education or what that might mean but, I did, but I, between that and what what your students are experiencing yeah so i mean like not not to toot the horn like i really think what we're what we're providing here is really special i went to um a culinary school called the culinary institute of america um which is you know it, it is a big investment and and when you get to that school um you you're handed recipes and the food is just there it's there in boxes you learn nothing about where that food was sourced where it came from how it arrived how it was purchased um any of that it's just you, the beginning and edu end of your education is these are the ingredients and you prepare them in this way to make this product um so being able to give a broader view of that process where it's you know cucumbers don't come in boxes um that's that's not where the cucumber begins the cucumber begins as a seed in the ground um and yeah maybe you don't know where um but if you do know where that cucumber comes from um and you can you know, get with your farmer and say, hey, I, I want to plant this seed. I want to plant this heirloom cucumber uh, and I want to plant it, you know, May 30th. And this is why um, you can really broaden your understanding of food. Um, Hannah makes fun of me all the time because I talk to the kids about terroir. I talk to them about, you know, how you can taste where food comes from. Um, and tomatoes that are grown in January in a greenhouse in California, um, taste like they were grown in a greenhouse in California in January. You know, they really, they don't have a lot going on. Um, so the quality of the ingredients that you start with really matters a lot. Um, and, you know, making ethical decisions about where you're getting those ingredients matters a lot. And I think that's really valuable for our students to understand that, you know, when you walk into that grocery store and you see this cornucopia of out of season products, um, you should wonder about that. You know, it should, it should make you think like, oh, there's just, how is this possible that there are these blueberries here in the middle of winter? And I'll just add one more thing too. I think that as an educator, for me, it's really it's really special to get to build relationships with students over the course of many years to be with Brodsky's culinary students from culinary one and ninth or 10th grade, and then all the way through advanced studies and get to see how these students are growing as chefs and not just as chefs, but as farmers also. Um, and it's been really cool to see the process of students also becoming really empowered in at the hub farm and in the garden um, to to make decisions about what's grown there, um, to understand how things grow, to understand how how and when you harvest a tomato, for example. Um, and so as an educator who sees a lot of sort of one off field trips, it's really powerful to see and build relationships with students over the course of a semester and then over the course of, of many years as well in their culinary journey. Oh, uh, yeah, that's incredible stuff. Thank you. Uh, Kate had a question for you. Kate's wondering what other school districts in North Carolina have similar programs. And I, I guess that could be uh, I don't know how many schools have culinary arts programs, uh, but also that have these kinds of uh, agriculture programs. Well, there, um, there are lots and lots of schools who through CTE have agriculture classes and have culinary arts classes. Uh, obviously, I can just come out and say none of them are like this. There is there is nobody who does it like we do it. Um, but there are. These programs are available in in quite a few districts throughout the state. I know that there are, I think, 60 districts that offer culinary arts programs. I'm not sure about um, agriculture, but I know that it's quite a few. Yeah. And like we said earlier, we are the only outdoor learning center that's funded through a school district in the southeast as far as we know. So we certainly could be, you know, there could be others out there. But as far as we know, we are a unique facility in that way. Um, certainly there are privately operated school gardens, um, or school garden organizations that support school systems, but we are DPS employees. We are a DPS entity funded through Durham Public Schools. And as far as we know, we are a unique entity in the Southeast in that way. Oh, wow. Regionally unique. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really incredible. Uh, so the, the question has come in about 
there are lots of schools that have campus gardens or, or they set up planter boxes and they they grow vegetables and things like that, uh, which is great. Of course, like at this scale is so impressive. But even the produce that's grown in a, a school's backyard doesn't get used very much. Are there ways for schools to be able to take advantage and actually use the produce that they make, that they grow? Brodsky, um, you want to answer that? Yeah, I mean, I absolutely think so. Uh, and I think, you know, and I've seen this at, at many elementary schools, um, you know, there's this tendency to say, okay, we've we've grown all this zucchini, for instance. That's something that people plant at schools. You eat all the zucchini and you have no idea what to do with it. And you just send home bags and bags of zucchini uh, with all of these families for it to go bad in their fridge while they don't know what to do with it. Um, and I think just like that, that COVID programming, um, the very best thing you can do is give people a plan and an opportunity. Um, so, you know, you send home that zucchini and you send it home with a recipe um, and flour and sugar. And you say, we are all gonna make zucchini bread Wednesday night, right? And we're all gonna follow this recipe. And, you know, um, providing all the ingredients is, is sometimes feasible, it's sometimes not. If you, if you are worried about what your families are going to be able to do, say, oh, we're not going to be able to ask these people to all have flour, sugar, eggs, baking powder, and oil. Um, then you come up with something simple. You say, we're, we're just going to do sauteed zucchini with chili and garlic, right? And, and you give them three ingredient recipes and you, and you make a time for it to be, even at a distance, uh, something that's done in community, something that's where everyone can come back the next day. Oh, did you make it? Oh, mine was really good. I burned mine. Mine was too spicy, right? So you have um, a chance for people to do this thing and to do it together because, um, you know, having the produce is, is step one. Um, and that's a that's a huge, a huge piece of the puzzle, but having a plan and, and being able to give people a plan and say, this is achievable, for anyone, you don't need any special skills. You don't need any special tools, um, and that's something that Hannah and I are always really mindful of. Is okay, we're gonna we're gonna make this thing. Um, can how can we make sure that you can make it without a mixer? How can we make sure that you can make it um, if all you have is is a bowl, right? If all you have is a bowl and a spoon, can you still make this thing? Um, so planning in that way, you know, plan from the bottom, plan from having nothing but what we give you. What can we make? Um, and I think that's that's a great way to make sure that that stuff does does go to good use, because it is really sad when you spend all this time planting and watering and weeding and then there's nowhere for the food to go. Yeah, and I'll just say, oh, sorry, I'll just say that I think that I think that um, vegetables growing outside on a campus can be sort of intimidating for teachers. We run into a lot of um discomfort, you know, teachers who, who don't feel comfortable or like they have the tools to actually get their kids outside into their school garden to utilize the produce. Um, and I think that as much as possible as we, we can try to teach students or teachers that there are actually pretty low barriers to getting outside and using produce that's growing in your school garden. Um, and that there are all kinds of cross curricular connections between, for example, a zucchini growing in the garden. You can use that in a math lesson. You could cut that zucchini into fractions, into quarters, and then into eighths and practice your your fractions that way. Or you could be a social studies teacher and teach about um squash blossoms and their history in Mexican cuisine as flor de calabaza in quesadillas, for example, and then um, send home your students with the the flowers. I'm sure many of their families would know how to make that at home. So I think there's a lot of really easy kind of cross-curricular connections that, that teachers can make there too. Very cool. Uh, all right. Ed wants to know if the Hub Farm is also teaching the students about sustainable agriculture, encouraging composting, and in general using less chemicals. Yeah, certainly. Um, we we certainly practice sustainable agriculture. I think it's important for us to also teach about um, industrial agriculture, as that is a lot of what exists in our state and in our country. Um, so we try to give sort of a broad overview of all of the different forms of agriculture, but certainly we practice sustainable agriculture. We um, we don't use pesticides at the farm. We're not certified organic, but we use all organic practices um, and and also compost on a very sort of 
rudimentary level, which means we throw food scraps in a pile and let them biodegrade and that's it. <laughs> um, but certainly, yes, we, we teach our students that. And then how can programs like this encourage new farmers? Do you have examples uh, of students pursuing farming at, I guess, maybe at any scale or uh, getting into culinary arts as well? You've both you know, been in long enough for the students to graduate, so I'm curious. I'll I'll, I'll jump in with a student who's who's still here, uh, just because I hear about his farm exploits almost every day. Who I, I I my expectation of this young man is that he is going to end up, uh, you know, a chef at in food service. But uh, they do started out with a lot of gardening at home, and then there were chickens at the house, and then there were goats at the house, and then he was bringing eggs. And then he was processing chicken meat and bringing in chicken meat. And I had to say, whoa, 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 hang on, buddy. I'm very excited. I'm very, I'm very thrilled. I do not want you slaughtering animals and bringing them to school. This is going to raise some questions. Um, but we do see um, quite a bit of participation um, beyond the program. So students that graduate um, from the culinary arts program, particularly those that go through all the way through advanced studies, um, do tend to end up at culinary schools and in the food service industry. And something that I've noticed over the last three or four years is our graduates are ending up in these farm to table focused, sustainable, sustainability focused restaurants um, as sous chefs, as chef de partie. Um, so they're, they are um, parlaying this experience directly into where they end up within food. Um, so we have a lot of students that are you know, at Fearington, um, who are seeing that, okay, this, this particular part of the industry can, can be really lucrative for me. And I can take this skill set that I, that I picked up here and, um, uh, you know, employ this, um, I lost my train of thought there for a minute, but, um, yes, we, we do see a lot of continued engagement kind of across the spectrum of what we're doing. Yeah, and as part of our a part of our vocational training at the Hub Farm, um, our high school internships are directly geared towards getting students ready to go right into landscaping jobs or greenhouse nursery jobs or um, farm farm jobs right after school or you know vet care for example is another big one. So um, we really are focusing on passing on these hands-on skills to our students who may want to, to go directly into their trade after high school. Um, and it provides another career option outside of moving into a um, college, or maybe they're wanting to go to a community school and do a, another a tech school or a trade school um, experience. So yeah, we're really trying to build those skills for our students through our internship programs. I mean, goodness, I wish there had been cooking classes for me to take in high school. Right. Same. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't think I was headed for farming, agriculture or uh, a culinary education at any point uh, in my you know planning as a as a teenager in high school. However, it would have been really great to have had a little bit of training beyond, you know. Goofing off in the kitchen, maybe or things. And like that's that. also that's also something that we try to be really mindful of is, you know, not every student that comes through the hub farm or the culinary arts program is going to be a farmer is going to be a chef. Um, but if every student can leave here and walk into the grocery store and kind of have a better understanding of what's happening in that produce section, have a better understanding of what's happening in that meat department and have the skills to be able to cook for themselves, for their family, um, then, then we really have succeeded in a, in a, in a huge way. Um, much more so than, you know, 10 kids leaving here and going to culinary school. If 300 students can leave here saying, oh, I know how to grow potatoes. I can do that. I understand that. Um, you know, or sure, I can I can break down a chicken. Um, you know, that's that's huge. You know, I think about it in terms of like what the uh, environmental education office at DEQ is doing or the the mission and vision of what we do, for example, in education here at the Museum of Natural Sciences. And it's so impressing the ways that all of those, uh, the world that I think we're all looking at and hope to continue to build and improve upon 
it, it, it all ends up coming together. You know, we want we want your students at Northern High School to also come and check out the Museum of Natural Sciences. And then through what you're doing and then through what we're doing, they make the connections in how sustainable agriculture, knowing about where the produce comes from in your grocery store, uh, influences the choices that they make throughout the rest of their life so that we can get movement on things like wildlife conservation and climate change action or, uh, you know, water and air quality, all of the things that we might talk about in an exhibit here at the museum that also end up connecting with what you're doing there or that what environmental educators across the state are doing when they talk about watershed health or forest health and how those things all end up connecting together to help us all try to to live in a better world than the one that we have today. So I, I think this is really great and impressive stuff. Um, okay, here's a good question for you. And this one will be the last one for the time because we're getting close. Uh, Hannah, do you have any funny or notable stories of student interactions on the farm? Uh, since this must be new experiences for some students. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, something I was going to say that I was thinking about, Chris, as you were talking about all of the intersections of um, environmental education across yeah. many different career um, areas is that, you know, I think that for a lot of students, the thing that's most um, striking for me and most powerful is that uh, a, a lot of students don't have experiences outdoors for a variety of reasons, right? There's historical reasons, there's um, there's histories of racism and slavery, obviously, in the South. Um, and so there's a lot of complicated histories there. Or we have students whose um, families have been in farming for centuries. And so there's just varying, varying degrees of experience and understanding and history with being outside um, and being in agriculture. And so for a lot of students, students haven't been on a farm, let alone haven't walked in the woods before. And so it can be scary or exciting or intimidating or, um, you know, any any number of emotions come up. And so, yeah, that's one of my favorite uh, pieces of the work is that, you know, the goal isn't for me, the goal isn't to get a student totally ready to be a farmer. It's just to get students outside like that. If, if I get a student outside and they're able to connect with um you know, the fact that there's a chicken walking around on the farm and to understand that that's that's how chickens grow. And that's if they eat chicken, that's that's how they eat the chicken um, or a student who just um, gets to walk on a forest trail for the first time and overcomes the fear of, um, you know, walking through the woods, then that feels like a successful outdoor experience for me. And so those are those are often the most notable experiences for me is just seeing the shift from fear or discomfort to awe and wonder at um, seeing at students seeing themselves as part of nature and as part of the outdoors, um, seeing that that journey and that progression and and also welcoming complicated and complex conversations about um, histories of agriculture and um, exclusion from the outdoors historically. So, yeah. That's excellent stuff. Uh, I, th I like that better than maybe just <laughs> maybe how awkward it might be for a young person to be on the on a farm for the first time but i, I think oh. that's so much, that's so much more uh interesting so good um i'm sure there's i'm sure there's great stories of the first time somebody saw a chicken running around on a farm though i know absolutely. what it was like the first time i saw a chicken running around on a farm i can only imagine uh, absolutely for for other students continuing in that well okay that's it. That's all the time that we've got. It's almost one o'clock. So let's call it. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for having us. Um, and for any of you out there, if we did, I don't know if there are other questions that we didn't get to, but um, our, our email addresses are in those uh, in that presentation. So do feel free to email us with any questions that you had. Yeah, thank you so much. We really enjoyed getting to spend some time with everyone today. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to today's edition of the Lunchtime Discovery Series as well. I know we got a lot of great insights out of this one. I hope you'll find ways to carry them forward in your work and in your life as well. Thanks to our guest speakers and to the digital media team here at the museum, Hannah, for being our live stream producer today. Uh, and everybody will be here. It'll be our last Earth Month session. 
next Wednesday at noon. So go ahead and mark your calendar. Sign up for the newsletter email at eenorthcarolina.org. Come and hang out with us again and do some more fun and fascinating learning. Until next time, stay safe, be kind, be well. We'll see you all again soon. Bye, everyone.